Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 37 of our West Ham United career mode here on FIFA 15 on Xbox 360 and in today's episode we play two more games, we are still of course in the January transfer window after last episode where we beat Reading in the FA Cup and then managed to beat Liverpool in the first leg of our Capital One Cup semi-final, we now play two BPL games against West Brom and then at home a stern test against Manchester City but of course in the background will be all the transfer activity we're looking to get up to we'll be looking at wingers to replace Andre Ayew as soon as you guys said yes to that swap deal or sort of new winger being brought in we'll be looking at strikers maybe selling an Air Valencia too and possibly a few other things here are the wingers we're looking at though Julian Draxler being the first for Schalke we've also got Adam Lajic here of Roma the Serbian 24 year old left winger and Julian Brandt one of the suggestions in the comment section below he plays for Bayer Leverkusen is 19 also got the slightly optimistic attempt at maybe Memphis Depay of PSV Baldo D.O.K or Balde Diaucata, sorry, the Spaniard playing for Lazio. Then we've got Ola John, one of the perhaps the pacey wingers to potentially replace Matt Jarvis, uh, the Dutchman for Benfica, Jean-Paul Boetius of Feyenoord, a 21-year-old left winger. We've also got Kevin Volland, 23-year-old right mid from Hoffenheim there uh, from Germany. Kevin Campbell, a Slovenian international playing for Red Bull Salzburg. At the moment, he's 25. Florian Torvan of Marseille. And then finally, we've got Zerd and Shakir. We've also got a few others that you guys said in the suggestions uh, the, uh, in the comment section like Roman Hamuma and uh, Domenico Berardi. So those guys have been shortlisted and we'll be making bids for them soon but first of all we're going to get into the first game of the episode and that is against West Brom. There you can see the 4-1-2-1-2 formation will be brought out in this game. In sort of in the past traditionally we haven't had too many problems playing West Brom we tend to always beat them fairly comfortably. Uh, the closest I think it's ever been is 2-1. That was back in Season 1. Here is the starting level. Though. Skufe, Uchida, Reed, Umtiti and Willems, the back five as per usual, with Jarvis and Ayu as the wingers. Dalva's in a defensive mid. Uh, Vinaldum is an attacking mid. And Ings and Valencia up front, interesting enough. Ings coming in to replace Mauro Zarate. Now, uh, West Brom actually going forward first there. Idei trying to burst through, but some brilliant covering and defending there from Willems. We're going to go forward with a long ball of our own. It's over the top for Ings, who's going to get away from Dawson with his pace. He slides there, and he scores right into the top corner with that OP sliding shot. And in the fifth minute, we take the lead after a very, very early scare from Brown Idei. Even more vital, that interception or tackle from Willems now as we take a 1-0 lead just a few minutes later. Now Valencia going forward, set through by Vinaldum, and he chips it over the goalkeeper, and that is brilliant from N.A. Valencia. Perhaps this is, gonna, this is gonna be his last game, who knows, but it's a fantastic finish over the head there of Ben Foster, the lovely little chip there, and that could be a little parting gift from N.A. Valencia if, of course, he is sold. But now Ayu, another p uh, player potentially out the door. He goes for the shot there after the fake shot, and a, a, well, he comes extremely close, and now West Brom going forward right on the edge of half-time. Brownie Day actually hitting the post there, and that was actually the last kick of the first half. It did end uh, the first half there, 2-0, but now we go forward again. Delph receiving it from Ings. He gives it back to the Englishman, it's a good strike, but a good save from Ben Foster in the West Brom goal. West Brom going forward again now into injury time in the second half. It looks to be too little too late, but Brownie Day has got his head onto that cross there from Chris Brunt. That does make it 2-1, but the game does end, in fact, 2-1. After a pretty tricky game, you know, it was no easy... There's not been any easy games recently, I've found. Um, but that was that was a fairly tough one. There you can see the ratings in the background. Good ratings uh, for Danny Ings, Fabian Delph, Ener Valencia, and Jorginho Vinaldum there in particular. But now, moving back into transfer action. Activity. Here you can see an actual, a slight scare perhaps. Let's say Schoen are not convinced that uh, the contract offer is being the, or the promises made in the contract are actually being fulfilled. So that's a bit worrying there for Lasse Schoen. We'll get back onto that a little bit later on. In the background you can see some inquiries for wingers there. We've made Julian Draxler 19.5 million, Lajic 10 million, Julian Brandt 19.5 million, Diaukaita 90 million from Lazio, 15 million for Kevin Voland. And uh, it, it appears to me that Lajic, Draxler and Voland are perhaps the best value for money. I think Brandt and Diaukaita are far too overpriced. In the background here you can see another offer we're getting from Napoli. Going to put a counter offer of 9 and a half million pounds on that for an Air Valencia and hopefully we'll see they may even go for that and now we've got an even better offer this time from Monaco of 9 million yet again we're going to counter offer this time it's going to be 9.8 million and we'll see what they can do with that of course Monaco have a little bit more money than Napoli so you know we're just sort of maybe being cheeky on that one now we're going to make some formal offers 
for the wingers that we made inquiries for. The first of which is going to be Julian Draxler here of Schalke. We're going to put... Now, this is going to be very, very cheeky. Zero pounds plus Andre Ayew. Straight swap. I can't see them accepting that, to be honest with you. But it's worth a try, and we'll see. They may be interested in the player. We may just have to put a little bit of money towards that. Next up is Adam Lajic, who's worth only £10 million, according to the... Um, According to the inquiry now, of course, the only issue here is that the team has to be interested in Andre Ayew, you know, because they're not going to accept zero pounds. So if they're not interested in Ayew, we're pretty much stuffed unless we can actually sell him for a monetary value. Now, next up, of course, is Kevin Volland. Again, we're going to go for the same deal that we have done for Draxler and Lajic beforehand. And we go for zero pounds plus Ayew and perhaps the most optimistic, as I said earlier, of the lot now, Memphis Depay. We're going to offer zero pounds and Ayew in return. We've got a few more uh, inquiries. That I'm going to show you in a second there as that is submitted to Memphis Depay here for Ola John uh, the inquiry they came back with a value of 8.5 million for Boatius 10.5 million for Kevin Campbell 16.5 million and the same for Zerd and Shakiri and for Florian Torvan afterwards so again not entirely sure if the last three of a uh, uh, val uh, value for money sorry uh, I know I've, I've played with Kevin Campbell before and he's a very good player but 16.5 million I'm not really willing to pay and Ola John and uh, Boatius possibly but we'll sort of leave that perhaps as a, a last minute backup, just in case we don't get Voland, Lajic, Depay or Drax. And in the background, you can see last episode, we made some bids for midfielders of, again, nothing, but this time Mark Noble in return. And you can see out of all of the teams, Leon accepted it for Clement Grognier. Now, of course, Clement Grognier was an absolute god in Aston Villa career mode. For anyone who's been subscribed to me for over a year, you'll know this guy is incredible. He was, at, well, he was a god in Aston Villa career mode. And potentially, we could be about to get him for free. Do we need an attacking mid? No, but it's Clement Grognier for free uh, and Mark Noble, who we're not going to use. There in the background, you can see confirmation of Inter and Napoli rejecting our offers for uh, Kuzmanovic and De Guzman, uh, uh, respectively. But now you can see in the background, Monaco have pretty much matched our asking price for Ener Valencia. Big, tough questions now need to be asked. Do we accept that? Leave that in the comment section below. Nine and a half million. Do we accept it uh, for Ener Valencia? Is that enough, do you think? And um, Leave that in the comment section below. But in the background, you can see Clement Grognier has accepted our contract offer and we are about to sign the, one of the best players that I've ever used in career mode on YouTube for free. Plus Mark Noble, of course. But let's be honest, it's pretty much for free because we weren't going to use him. We have signed Clement Grognier for free just in time for the second game of this episode. And that is one of the trickiest uh, sort of challenges that we have faced in recent times. We play Manchester City here in the Barclays Premier League. We did uh, we did an incredible madness a few episodes ago where we beat Chelsea. Can we repeat the feat this time against Manchester City? Clement Grognier will be on the bench in his return to Carimo. Perhaps I'll do a little video showing what he actually did in Aston Villa Carimo because a lot of you guys will be new. You might not know or I'll show that at the start of next episode to sort of see what you're in for. In the background you can see the squad, the 4-2-3-1 wide formation being used in this one. A slightly more defensive formation but uh, City going forward straight away. It's Alvaro Negredo of course scored very early on in, the, uh, in one of the fixtures last year and he scored again through horrendous defending Winston Reid showing absolutely no strength whatsoever a poor tackle from TT that's my fault and Scuffe being beaten at the near post as well a catastrophe in just a second minute not not just down to me partly down to me but ah oh, just shocking we go forward though looking for the immediate response there with Delphi drags it wide he should have done a lot better but now are you cutting inside in the 25th minute and he unleashes a fantastic strike right down into the top corner that is astonishing from Andre Ayew. Pinpoint accurate, right to the top corner. We're thinking of getting rid of him, of course. Now Cavani on the ball. He's going to try and play forward in the grader. He goes for the near post strike and it's saved in the end this time by Scuffe. But now City going forward again. Negredo passes it to Kadira and they're going to score a wonder goal of their own. I've never seen Sami Kadira do that in real life, mind you. But it's a fantastic finish from the German defensive midfielder to cancel out our fantastic goal with Andre Ayo. And it's now 2-1. Now moving into the second half. In onto the hour mark. And that is clumsy from Atsuto Achida on Edinson Cavani. And it is a clear penalty. It's unfortunate. It's one of those very clumsy sort of bundled over uh, type ones, but it's going to be Yaya Torre who steps up and the game looks beyond us now unless Simone Scuffe can save us here, he doesn't, he goes the wrong way and Yaya Torre makes it 3-1 here to Manchester City it looks as if the game is now over on the 61st minute, we're going to go forward again, not going to stop us, Ener Valencia skipping past the challenge he cuts now, inside he's just got the keeper uh, to beat there, but Caballero with a fantastic save and the game does in fact end 3-1, our first loss in quite some time, I think in about 3 episodes in the background, you can see 
see the ratings confirming that Clement Grenier did come on later on. We'll be giving him his full debut later, uh, sort of, well, not later, in next episode, episode number 38, and I'll showcase some of the incredible things he did in Aston Villa, Karim. But a disappointing loss in the background, however, though, moving on to transfers again, because they're the most important things, realistically, at this point. You can see that Schalke and PSV have rejected our offers for Depay and Draxler, wanting more money plus Andre Ayew instead of zero pounds plus Andre Ayew. However, Hoffenheim have accepted the offer. They are willing to allow Kevin Volland to join us in in uh, in a straight swap for Andre Ayew, who's pretty much done nothing for us. I know we ignore the fact he's just scored an absolute blinder for us in that City game. Apart from that, he's contributed pretty much nothing. Nothing. So we go in for a contract offer there on Kevin Volland, and we'll see what uh, that brings next episode. The other question I want you guys to ask in the uh, oh, sorry answer in the comment section is: Should I sell Ener Valencia? Of course, for the uh, for the amount that you see on the screen, there nine and a half million to Monaco. Is that enough? Drop that in the comment section below. Should I sell Valencia and should I sign the wonder kid Kevin Volland from Hoffenheim in a straight swap for Ayu because he's got better potential than the, than the stat that Ayu has now. He should be 80 stat as well so it should just be a straight swap in terms of actual rating as well. In the background you can see the table United actually top of the game in hand in front of Spurs. Ourselves now dropping to third from second at the end of last episode with that loss to City. Uh, Liverpool there fourth from Chelsea, Arsenal and Manchester City down in seventh despite that loss against us but that's dragged City back into the title race now as well like about seven teams covered by five points an astonishing title race halfway through the season if you did enjoy this episode full of transfers and action in the games feel free to leave a like smashing 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome subscribe if you are new around here as well and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much as well as uh, your answers to my questions there at the end of the episode it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a good day enjoy yourselves and goodbye <laughs>